Also from us, a warm welcome to our conference on refiguration of spaces. We are happy about the large attendance for the first international conference of the Collaborative Research Center. As you probably realized, the refiguration of spaces is the title of our conference and it is also the title of our research consortium which is designed to work up for 12 years. As the Collaborative Research Center only started one year ago, it would be utterly premature to even attempt to indicate anything like empirical results. We do neither want to start with a spectacular catch line attracting the economy of attention for the next two or three weeks. Rather, we want to sketch our notion of refiguration like a framing idea which sensitizes empirical observations on the current transformation of space. By the notion of refiguration, we want to address the question of how the current societal transformation and its ensuing conflicts, crises, and uncertainties affect the relations of humans to spaces, their spatial practices as well as the ways how they negotiate and construct spatial orders. Why is it worth it? We need to ask how changes in spatial actions and sp spatial formations lead to transformation of society or in society. The questions presuppose some theoretical reflections on the co social constitution and the communicative construction of space of which we can only articulate the basic result that space is the medium in which the transformation of any society is taking place. This holds even more for contemporary society, which is characterized on the one hand by functional differentiation, vertical hierarchical order, and a tendency of homogeneity, which is on the other hand, in an often conflictual tension with heterogeneity. The idea of refiguration is taken to describe the conflictual dynamic between various poles underlying societal transformation. In this talk, we do want to outline the general, we don't want to outline the general relational theory of space, but first sketch the notion of refiguration as a model for the recent societal development. In the second part, we would like to delineate how we want to approach the questions of social and spatial transformation in our collaborative research group. As the title of the conference suggests, we want thirdly to specifically ask for the effects of mediatization on space, on circulation, and mobility. As refiguration is a sensitive concept, we, foolishly, are eager in looking forward to your contribution, which may help us to specify the notion and understand the current transformation of societal order. The refiguration of space. In our collaborative research project, we start from the premise that what is social always takes on spatial forms. As much as this view came to be shared in the aftermath of the spatial turn, it misses the point that the current transformations and its ensuing conflicts, crises, and increasing uncertainties pose a common problem that these crises, conflicts, 
and uncertainties affect the relation of humans to spaces, their spatial practices, as well as the ways how they negotiate and construct spatial orders. We claim that there is a common pattern in these, trans in these transformations and conflicts which we want to designate as refiguration. By refiguration, we mean that the order of present-day societies results from two conflicting logics simultaneously. We use the term logic here in the sense of Bourdieu as a structural principle resulting from action. There is first the logic of modernity, which as a large-scale type of figuration is characterized by the differentiation of institutionalized, specialized systems by homogenization and centralization or centralized master plans. The second logic is the logic of late modern or postmodern societies, which refers to the very different figuration characterized by re relationalization and symbolized by their network model. The notion of refiguration tries to identify the dynamics of conflict and possibly its causes. Moreover, it tries to open up research for the new forms, structures, and spatial orders which result from this, these dynamics so often ignored by either modernists and postmodernists, by globalists and nationalists, by structuralists and post-structuralists, or to relate to a recent event by unilateralists and multilateralists. Our diagnosis should not be misunderstood, and I underline this, as propagating refiguration to be a desirable state. Rather, to the contrary almost, we presume to be it, refiguration to be a reasonable hypothesis which allows to explain the reasons for the social crisis and subjective uncertainties we are witnessing over the last decades. The basic idea of refiguration consists in the assumptions of a conflictual but interdependent dynamics between these different logics, or in a more metaphorical way, refiguration means the forms resulting from the energy between the, the opposed poles of these logics. Every logic is, of course, in itself heterogeneous. What had been called modern and what used to be called postmodern is in itself a bunch of different elements which can be investigated, in our case, by the comparison of different studies of space. Norbert Elias' idea of interdependencies allows us to add that these dynamics are affecting all social fields and society as a whole on all micro, meso, and macro levels, including the individual actors, their knowledge, body, and emotions. We expect different expressions of refigurations in various societal spheres, it is economy, politics, arts, etc., as well as on all levels, from the subject to organizations and cultural areas. But we expect also interdependencies between them. In addition, in non-Western societies, the lines of conflict may be quite different, not only in, in, Brasil, in Brazil. Thus, in the compressed modernity of South Korea, for example, in which we both are doing research, and probably also in China and East Asia, refiguration is driven by the conflict between a rapid process of economic and technological instrumentalism, on the one hand, and what our colleague Chang calls individualization without individualism, supporting a specific East Asian form of nationalism, the reinvention of traditional values and kinship structures, on the other hand. Different lines of conflict may be found in Muslim countries or Hinduist India, where conflict has been linked to religion, or, of course, South America and Africa. While sensitive to these varieties of modernity, in the context of Western thinking, and probably only in the context of Western thinking only, refiguration allows to adjust the epochal diagnosis of theories of modernization, globalization, light, and postmodernity. As there seems little doubt about the transformation of temporal structures, the acceleration of lives, communication, or markets, 
space has received much less attention when it comes to the di diagnosis of con contemporary society. As we start from the assumption that any social action finds its expression in space, by the notion of refiguration of spaces, we want to ask how the most different ongoing processes result in newly emerging figurations of space. To say it again in different words, space is the medium of the transformation of contemporary society as much as time, so that the analysis of space provides an integrative starting point for the analysis of the emerging patterns of society. If we focus on the concept of refiguration on speciality, we can see that the process of globalization is in conflict with the centralized figuration of the nation state with its bounded territory clearly defined in enlightened cartography characterized by its increased centralization of power, the monopolization of violence, and differentiation of social structures. In terms of space, these assumptions suggest that territorial spatial forms, such as designated zones, camps, colonies, etc., coexist, interlock with, or spread out alongside over banners, more fluid, more explicitly relational spatial assemblages like networks, layers, clouds, trajectories. In similar terms, the homogenization of modern spaces, the clear functional differentiation, for example, in modern cities, in functional areas, or their vertical hierarchical order, for example, in administrative architecture, is in tension with the heterogeneity of hybrid third or non-spaces, heterotopias, and the flatness of hierarchical orders, so much underlined by theories of late, second, or post-modernity. The homogenizing top-down planning of smart cities in the global south or in Asia, for example, contrasts to the logic of networking and fluidity in the so-called smart infrastructure in the same countries. Similarly, the transgressive tendencies of transnationalism, cosmopolitanism, and world culture with its new virtual military conflicts as institutionalized in the European Union is confronted with the reaffirmation of principles of renationalization, the return of modern wars, and forms of regionalization, which explicitly try to avoid the forms of adaption postmodern theories like localization. This refiguration of societies articulated in battles on the meaning of spaces in imaginary models of security and risk, as well as in processes of closure and exclusion, such as the erection of new frontiers. These conflicts result in unpredictability, lack of security and orientation. The most obvious transformation consists in what, what came to be called globalization. For example, the increase of interdependencies and connectivities, such as the explosion of mobility, including of groups of refugees, of the circulation of commodities of free trade agreements between Japan and the EU, of technical procedures and technologies and the corresponding political, military, and legal structures of control on the one hand. On the other hand, we also face the opposing anti-globalizing tendencies such as Brexit, the abandonment of free trade agreements by the US government, but also the only eat local products movement.
translocalization, polycontextualization, and mediatization. I first turn to translocalization. Refiguration can be tentatively identified by three aspects, which will function as middle range empirical hypothesis. The most well known is the concept of translocalization. By this guiding hypothesis of translocalization, we assume that there is a linkage of different places. At the same time, the relevance of constructions of locality increases because places are simply no longer given as self-evident. In our project on public space in the social web, for example, chaired by Barbara Pfeich, we observe, for example, that US politics is an important topic in the Twitter sphere in Jerusalem, much more important than in Berlin. The strong connection to US topics seemed, seemed to be driven by the Anglo-American population in Jerusalem, reflecting translocal ties. By the concept of polycontextualization, we express our assumption that, for example, circulation, networks, and places are being connected in a way by communicative action so that in the course of action, more and more, and possibly also new, communicative construction of space become effective at the same time. Take, for example, the massive change of control rooms, which we are studying. Control rooms constitute a paradigmatic form of modernity to control not only populations in surveillance, but also technological and natural resources and risks. Surprisingly, digitalization with its assumed tendency to networking and decentralization has not led to the substitution of spatially centralized control rooms in one room, but rather fostered the rapid integration of most different functionalities, such as water resources, health services, traffic, or electricity. The integration of different infrastructures in one local cent center and in one single control room connects a series of different spatial and material infrastructures which are not only observed by what Karin Knorr calls a scopic regime of multiple monitors and screens. They also become relevant contexts of actions which this way exhibit what we believe to be polycontextuality. This polycontextualization, however, is not just a postmodern transgression of space. It seems as if it contributes to the bounding, the rebounding, one may say, of certain spaces such as smart cities and helps to mark off the differences anew between urban and rural areas, nations and cultural areas in a way which features in our definition of refiguration. We will devote some energy in order to clarify what we mean by translocalization and polycontextualization in the course of our collaborative research project. In this conference, our topic, uh, topic, topics include two additional aspects, which are to us major pillars for our understanding of refiguration. Additional pillars, I should add. Mediatization and circulation. Mediatization refers to the ways how media and technologies affect embodied communicative actions, the relations constituted by them, and consequently, spatial structure. Its relevance can be easily understood if one recalls the substantial social transformation from oral cultures to literal cultures of handwritings. For example, in terms of settlements, cities, for example, or political order, central power, or states. One should also remind that the printing press provides, provided large masses of people with their product, in, including already very early maps, of course, mass-produced maps, some hundred years before the advent of industrialization in England. Also, electrification of industrial mass products and productions in the 19th century, visible, for example, in Berlin by the factory of Siemens or Siemens Stadt, Siemens Town, downtown, which is actually currently retransformed and digitalized into a new center of, uh, of uh, probably virtual, uh, uh, virtual intelligence. Uh, this um, uh, industrial electrification was preceded by the dissemination of the telegraph 
a technology which allowed to separate the means of communication and the means of transport in a way obviously affecting the spatial order immensely. The recent refiguration of space is related to and driven by the recent digital mediatization, which also set in as a communication medium, the computer which was invented as a communication medium. Digitalization has not led to the special spatialization of society, as many had made us believe. Yet digital mediatization quite obviously affects space, social action, and spatial imagination, imagination as, for example, the study of locative media, like dating apps, um, for exa indicates, which are investigated by Ingo Schulz-Scheffer's team here. There is little doubt that the late and postmodern visions, as, for example, the network society and the space of flows by Castells in 1996, have been countered by the insights, by Castells' insights, by the way, into the communication power of the new media monopolies and um, their capacities to centralize information. These new communicative figurations, as Kuldry and Hap would have it, are addressed by them as deep mediatization. That is, to quote, digital media are ubiquitously permeating the whole society and increase interdependencies by their technical connectivity. They extend processes of social communication locally by speeding up communication, unquote. Also, digital mediatization quite clearly, clearly reshapes and substitutes the rather centralized and hierarchical order of mass media. It is not restricted to the media, or to com the media of communication. Being based on the revolutionary connection of information and communication technologies, digitaliza digitalization is growing, growingly affecting every field of society. It is not only the media system, as communication theorists assume, but even industry, technologies, and infrastructures, which are refigured by digital mediatization. In the economy, it is, for example, the production of commodities, such as 3D printing, the dissemination on the market, and uh, the combination of production and consumption, that is, prosumption, in ways which have been labeled somewhat one-sidedly, considering the stable chains of production studied by Bauer and Kulke in the research consortium by digital cap capitalism. But mediatization also affects politics, sports, or as we currently are witnessing, science. By changing the relations between subjects, as well as between subjects and objectivations, mediatization contributes to the refiguration of subjective aspects of space. Just recall the radical transformation of spatial knowledge by children who do not consider space anymore as something that surrounds them as taken for granted. A transformation which is being held responsible for the increased vandalism, the fascination for global extremist movements, as well as for the revitalization of inner city life, which allows young people to navigate with mobile instead of fixed media through its communicating spaces using, for example, locative media, such as Pokemon Go. Mediatization obviously affects mobility and consequently the process we call circulation. Circulation refers to the way in which mobility creates spatial order and disorder. By circulation, we mean movement of people, goods, and technologies between different places. Circulation is not an unsystematic free flow of entities, but proceeds along orderly institutional paths, organization fields, and social infrastructure, which reliable transition points and follow-up operations. If one thinks about the role of circulation and the refiguration of space, one quickly gets the impression that spaces of circulation are a consequence of social transformation. A closer look, however, shows that these trajectories, predefined paths of circulations, lines, routes of traffic, 
in which circulation occur have always already been a necessary component of the construction of the, construction of the modern day space. Routes, lines, paths and tracks of various kinds such as railway lines, public transport, networks, motorways, food paths, are the underlying structures that allow for an opening up towards mobility in homogeneously designed urban spaces. The railway and the modern street are products and icons of transport. Traffic had informed notions and theories about the city long before mechanized vehicles of private transport massively changed the image of the city. Urban planning became traffic planning and traffic management. Modernization now meant, as for example Gerhard Fink shows, eliminating narrowness, breaking up closure, opening up, also in the sense of opening up to an outside world. With the rise of functionalist urban design, just think of Le Corbusier, for example, the city is divided into zones that are made accessible by centralized trails and trajectories which simultaneously connect and delimit zones, which thus they define. We'd like to introduce the term trajectory space in German Bahnenraum as a neologism to capture these various sorts of transport lines, paths and routes as a new formation of space by circulation. The Korean city of Songdo, for example, which we are studying in various individual projects in our collaborative research center, appears as a trajectory space par excellence. With a target population of 70,000, currently 35,000, the city has several eight-line, eight-lane streets. Some sidewalks are several meters wide and there are a lot of cycle paths, although hardly any Korean rides a bicycle. A shopping mall in Songdo was designed by the architect Min Suk Cho so that it could be easily crossed by electronic scooters. Garbage is transported in the underground on conveyor belts and proceeded centrally. All these paths, lines, tracks, routes are facilitate circulation, mobility, and displacements. They have, in our opinion, not yet been suffi sufficiently factored in as a significant spatial area in their own right in research and series, with a possible exception in the research in urban planning departments. It is, however, trajectory space which also includes shippings and air routes that organize the social co coexistence and societal relations on the most fundamental level. The spatial analysis of Twitter networks demonstrates, for example, that statements of solidarity after terrorist attacks are not primarily sent from the region or from neighboring cities, but from cities with the most effective and lowest price flight connections to the attractive city. Trajectory spaces of circulation are so relevant to the understanding of refiguration since they literally seem to pave the way out of the spatial homogenization of modern spaces, their clear functional differentiation or vertical hierarchical order right from the start. For Rudolf Schwarz, for example, the general planner in the reconstruction of Cologne after the destruction of World War II, the transport was the way to connect the homely city, a concept of place, to the world, a concept of translocality, by circulation, 
and trajectorial space. In the way that we conceive refiguration of present day societies to follow two conflicting logics simultaneously, which are independent to each other, circulation links to territory, territoriality is part of modernity as well as a precondition for, for digitalized militarization and deterritorialization. It is even more complicated if we return to translocalization as a linkage of different places and at the same time a boost for the construction of locality. In the perspective, in this perspective place, Places are simply no longer given as self-evident and circulation forces us to come up with an even stronger idea of place. Just consider what happens in Songdo or all over the world. If places of circulation and mobility become stronger, then we witness the increased emotional need to create spaces as networks of places. For example, the reinvention of traditional Korean houses as meeting places and landmarks. That is what we mean when we say territorial spatial form coexist, interlock with, or spread out alongside Oba and Venice, more fluid, more explicitly relational spatial networks, connections, and figuration. It is the very empirical question for our study of refiguration to answer the question, how do they do this? The forms of spaces, territorial space, trajectorial space, network space, etc., are of interest for empirical spatial research, but the social, socio-spatial is best researched as we suppose as uh, with refiguration thinking. As mentioned in the beginning, the concepts presented here are not no straight jackets, but rather considered as sensitizing concepts. The refiguration of spaces, therefore, is to be specified by the empirical studies conducted within the context of our collaborative research cluster as well as in the neighboring research endeavors in ways which may be sketched roughly as follows. Well, I did sketch it, so it's probably only one bad diagram, one, uh, one other bad diagram done by me, but it should give you the, the gist of what, what we assume is happening. Moreover, our sensitivity of the sensitizing concepts is not restricted to our own project, but is very much open to other input, critique, and inspiration. Therefore, and it is therefore, we have been inviting you, the speakers and guests, to this conference to learn from you about the specificities, the qualities, and the range and extension of the transformations that are of so much concern to us all. And we hope that we may succeed to come to a new understanding of what has been happening here, elsewhere, and everywhere in the spaces we call society. Thank you very much.